Well, we welcome him in now. He's Paul Feinbaum, the mouth of the South, the voice of the SEC, the mayhem master, uh, as some have referred to him, as a guy that likes to create it and then somehow put it out. I don't know how, but he does it. He's Paul Feinbaum. You can see him on the Paul Feinbaum Show every single day on the SEC Network. You can also see him on SEC Nation on Saturday mornings and throughout the week on various ESPN programs. Paul, what's going on, my friend? How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, Greg, I, I saw you from a distance Saturday. Didn't get a chance to talk because of all the security people around you in Lexington, but uh, hello. Yeah, it, that's exactly what it was, Paul. It was the security folks in Lexington. They were very concerned about you getting too close. And, and uh, you know, I think that's a, that's a justifiable and understandable reasoning. L- looking at this kind of the slate, first of all, um, it's a little underwhelming, just being honest, a little underwhelming with some of the matchups that we've had in the first couple weeks of the season in the SEC. Now, we've had a few SC LSU, Georgia Clemson, a couple others that have Miami, Florida. But for the most part, most of the teams haven't really tested themselves yet. So what do you make of just college football scheduling model right now as it currently exists? Uh, it, it seems very much spread out. Uh, and I think that's for the most obvious reason, Greg, the additional bye week. Uh, but it, it does. It does. I mean, you look at the at the list this week, and I mean, it's hard to find a defining game. Uh, I mean, you might go out west for, for some really intriguing games. Uh, the SEC doesn't have what I would call a great game, uh, and and I just think it's. I, I don't really know why. You would, I, I thought it would get better, frankly, with with additional schools. Uh, but but I think it's just try. We just have an extra week to kill, and I think that's the issue. Well, at some point, I know that uh, more and more Power Five matchups will be scheduled and will get better for sure in the future. But it just for me, I like I love the sport no matter what. I think you'll be watching. I'll be watching. I'm just curious, you know, how you think it can get fixed. But looking at some of the matchups that do have a ten- chance to move the needle, Florida and. Texas A&M, Billy Napier in a difficult spot. Now there's questions about who he should start at quarterback. It's a challenge nonetheless. Um, Must win situation, it feels like. So when we look back at what happens this weekend with Florida, you guys will be there for SEC Nation. What do you think people are going to say and remember about this potential performance? Well, I I think must win is is really an understatement. it, should Billy Napier fail to win this game and Florida loses again, I, I don't see how he can survive. Uh, I know that sounds like uh, you know we're going for the headline. We're not. Uh, I was down there a couple weeks ago, uh, and you know my pulse of that situation is every all the goodwill Billy Napier found in the off season, and he found a lot, went out the window. There's virtually no confidence in this program without a win. And and by the way, that win does, a win over Texas A and M doesn't really guarantee anything except it just it stops the hemorrhaging and and that's exactly what it is and you know the schedule uh, has been known for 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 months now but uh, you know even central florida in a couple weeks looks uh, precarious without a win and then tennessee and i mean the only the only part of the schedule that got a little bit easier is a home game uh, on the other side of this uh, the, the second half of the season against Kentucky because I don't think I mean, you you know more about Kentucky than I do having just done their game but so I so yeah I mean I, you know we we can sugarcoat it all we want uh, but it's a waste of time I mean he better win this game Columbia South Carolina I did not expect this to be the epicenter of SEC football this week <laughs> with game day heading there and with LSU now heading there and South Carolina's resurgent performance the last week against Kentucky, and even though they struggled a bit against Old Dominion, that group that we saw last week in person looked like the real deal. So if LSU were to start the season one and two, given the conversation around their program heading into this year as a possible playoff contender, what does that mean for where Brian Kelly's at? Well, I think it would be a shattering loss, Greg. Um and I'm a big fan of Brian Kelly, but uh, to have two losses uh, by the middle of September would, would be really uh, hard hard to handle. Uh, LSU fans are, are great fans, but they're also quick to uh, start asking questions. And they would certainly be asking plenty of them. And, and LSU has suffered some pretty serious injuries already. Uh, this season, which doesn't help them, but but I, I think it's another case where I mean, where we're talking about Florida as a matter of survival. 
we're talking about LSU as, as a playoff team. And, you know, are, are they, and, and they're really on the fringe, or they're on the outer fringe of the playoffs. Uh, they're, they're, they're in the next group who doesn't make it. Uh, but, 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 so that's why they have to, they have to win uh, because they, they do have some good home games too. Uh, with Alabama and Ole Miss. So I think that gives them, uh, Oklahoma, I believe, as well. So that gives them some really good opportunities, but but not with another stumble. I, I, felt, I felt like they, they, they threw away the opportunity against Southern Cal, and, and they can't do that again. Yeah, that one was a tough one to stomach, I would imagine, if you are an LSU fan. Uh, another one that's really tough to stomach. <laughs> I feel like I've been fielding calls on it. I'm sure you've been fielding calls on it. But the reaction right now to what's going on at Auburn uh, is really, really aggressive, <laughs> to say the least. Calling for people to be replaced, suggesting that things need to be adjusted, and it's just two games into year number two for Hugh Freeze. So I know that they don't play anybody this week, but how real are the concerns about the uneven nature of Auburn's play in the last two years? They should be real. Uh, and... You know, for all the good things you can say about this program off the field, the on the field performance lately has been terrible. And you, you go back to New Mexico State and then the fourth and 31, the, the complete no show against Maryland. And now this, uh, I, I, I didn't see any way they could lose to Cal. Now, that's not, that's not being that's not showing any respect for any part of the Cal program. But that's just a that's just a gut response when somebody says, hey, you think uh, Cal can beat Auburn. The answer is no, uh, and, and they did. And and you know since then Hugh Freeze really, uh, you know everything he's he's saying is, is and has said is being interpreted. Uh, did he, is he is he blaming his players? Is he because he doesn't seem to be taking too much blame? And I, I realize every coach mouths the words, Greg, but sometimes you you know when when they really mean it or not. So he 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 gambled on on Peyton Thorn. Uh, that's his decision. That's his guy and. Uh, He's going to ride with him, and uh, this is not the same situation as Napier. Uh, nobody, nobody's firing Hugh Freeze, uh, at least yet. Uh, so, where this season goes will determine uh, what the off season looks like. But I, I, I do know, and you know, because you spent a lot of time in Alabama. Uh, the, the, the boys that gave him the job are capable of taking it away if he doesn't start performing. It is pretty shocking, though, to see, and kind of going back and something that I had just kind of forgotten, his teams will play up to the best teams. But for whatever reason, there's always a game or two on the schedule that are just I'm just flat out unexplainable. And I, I wonder, too, from Auburn's perspective, like, do they care more about a consistent, solid, they're going to win 10 or 11 a year? Um, obviously that's unlikely given the fact that Auburn, I don't think has put together back to back 10 win seasons in their history, or do they want their program to be the giant killer? Because if they want them to be the giant killer, Hugh Freeze might be the best man for the job, but consistency is not something that he's experienced even dating back to his time at Liberty and at Ole Miss. Auburn fans are very proud. Uh, and, and you know, they take pride in, in what that football team puts on the field, e even in defeat, uh, as painful as that can be. They, they don't take pride in what we saw Saturday and what we saw in the other games that we've referenced. So uh, I, I think there's a disconnect right now. And uh, you know, th this is coming after a reboot. Uh, I mean, <laughs> there, there aren't a lot of fam familiar faces on that coaching staff from a year ago. And some of that is baked into the cake, Greg. Right? I mean, you get the job and, and, and people are in your ear, hey, we, we really we need you to keep this guy. I, I, I much prefer the coach wipe the place out. Uh, I, I've, I've never felt keeping play, keeping former players or keeping people on the staff for recruiting <laughs> because recruiting is so different. This isn't the good old days uh, where it really mattered where you played. It, ma it really matters how much money you have right now. Uh, so I think he's made some mistakes. Um, his, his demeanor isn't great either. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, I, I mean I've, I've been around Hugh Freeze once or twice uh, down there in, in interviews. He doesn't really look like he wants to be there. I, I know that sounds like a bold statement, but I mean, there's something going on with him. I mean, at least act like you you you, you want the job. I mean, show some emotion. Uh, and Brian Kelly, for all the theatrics of uh, punching the punching the table, at least it looked like he cared. I mean, there's there are times when I, I don't really know what he freezes up to. It looks like he's okay. I got I got the job I've always wanted. I was able to bounce back from disaster at Ole Miss. I got the Liberty job. I made the most of it until I mailed it in the, the last few weeks and. 
now I've got Auburn and uh, is this really what I want? Uh, I, I, I know that sounds like I'm out, I'm out, I'm out uh, in left field, but that's my impression of being around Hugh Freeze.